Hello everyone, um, my name is Victoria and I'm doing my project on prostitution in ancient Rome. Um, I want to start by taking a rhetorical view of prostitution and um, I want to talk about why it was such a huge culture in ancient Rome and why it was such a vast career. And I want to talk about what drove prostitution and I'm going to take this from a feminist approach. Um, I won't get too, too feminist here, but I do have some good points to make about um, kind of like the self-worth of the Roman women and why I think that a lot of them turned to prostitution. Um, so first I'll start with a brief history of the sexuality in ancient Rome. Um, women and men were really unequal when it came to sexuality. Men were basically allowed to have sex with whoever they wanted whether it be men or women, um, whether it be slaves or prostitutes or freeborn men or women, um, but women were only allowed to have sex with their husband. Um, the only case a man could not have sex is if it was with a man of his same social class. Um, but for women, they were meant to be unmarried but marriageable, which means they were meant to be virgins. And I got this information from the Oxford Handbook of Ancient Rome. Um, also a brief history of St. Agnes. Um, St. Agnes was described as the most beautiful and virtuous woman and at this time she was only 13 years old. And 13 seems really really young to us but in ancient Rome 13 year old girls were basically getting married whether or not they liked it. And um, Agnes caught the eye of the prefect's son and he asked for her hand in marriage and she was 13 so she said no, she wasn't ready. And um, upon the refusal of her marriage, he um, basically said, if I can't have you, no one can and he wanted her to become a vestal virgin. Um, well, Agnes did not want to become a vestal virgin and that is because she was Catholic and the vestal virgins were pagan. Uh, so she said no again, and at this time the prefect's son took her to um, Do Domitian Stadium and uh, made her work as a prostitute under the arches there. Um, the Latin word for arch is fornix, and that is where the prostitutes used to work, and that is where we get our word fornication from. Uh, that's from Tales of Ancient Rome slash uh, prostitutes. But, um, so, the first man who approached Agnes was blinded because of, basically, as the story goes, because of her holiness. And uh, the prefect's son saw this and he thought it was because she was a witch. So, because she was a witch, she was to be burned at the stake. So, when the day came, she was naked, burned at the stake, and... Um, while she was burning her hair grew to cover her and the fire split and she survived it and so they figured she must definitely be a witch at which time the, they beheaded her and she died. Um, this picture that I have up here it says Agnes virgin and martyr um, and the reason I think she's so important is basically because um, it shows how much can happen just from the lack of freedom that a woman had to basically even say no to marriage. Um, prostitution was not outlawed, not stigmatized, and not really looked down upon because as I said before it was really just kind of like a norm. Uh, if you wanted to become a prostitute you would go to the ad aisle which was responsible for public works and you would discuss with him your price and um, he would give you a card of the price that you were going to ask for favors from each of your customers. And if you were a registered prostitute, you avoided taxes on unmarried adults under the Augustan rule. Uh, and that is a draw of registering to become a prostitute. I got that information on ancienthistory.about.com. Once a registered harlot, always a harlot. So there was no getting it off your record. Uh, you had regulations on dress, regulations on hours of business. If you were caught unregistered working as a prostitute, you and your pimp would probably be sentenced to death. 
and um, slaves and freeborn women were both prostitutes. Like I said before, obviously slaves didn't have a choice, but freeborn women did, and I believe it's because, one, the fact that they felt unworthy or maybe less worthy in society, and they were kind of seen that way as well. Um, two, for like rebellion and you know just kind of doing whatever they want and three independence and again doing whatever they want um, which is really was rare for a well-behaving well-respected Roman woman. Uh, they both had men and women uh, as prostitutes. Um, most of my research came up as men but I, or I'm sorry women but I do know that there were men. Um, I read about gladiators uh, working part-time, turning tricks to make up money, and um, since they were regarded as some of the strongest athletes in the time, sometimes elite women would um, take a gladiator and make them their own private escort and like pay them for that. Um, you could see clients in brothels, roadhouses, or taverns. And uh, there are a lot of different types of prostitutes. Um, part-time, like I said, they wanted to worship Venus, professional mourners, which saw their clients on graves and tombstones, which is kind of really freaky and weird to think about. Girlfriends, uh, who obviously saw other women, slaves, who again had no choice, and many, many, many more. I found this information on feminist blog archives, and there was also one type of harlot that really caught my eye, and this is a reoccurring theme of the Lupe. Uh, the Lupe is what they call the she-wolf, and this idea of the she-wolf is the prostitute, basically. Um, I was watching a documentary on sexuality in ancient Rome, and the brothel was called the um, Lupe Grande, which obviously... Um, it meant the big house of the she-wolf, basically, and that was a brothel. Um, Aca Lorenta was referred to as the most noble whore, and um, even though that's trying to be a compliment, uh, I don't really believe that being called a whore is a compliment, so even though she was referred to as the most noble whore, this is kind of one of the reasons, again, why I think that women were they felt less of themselves and they felt as if they maybe wanted to become prostitutes. And Acca Lorento is actually the mother of Romulus and Remus and she is depicted um, feeding them in the famous statue. So in conclusion, uh, the reasons that I believe ancient Roman societal structures drove prostitution are one, because sex sells and it always will. That's probably why prostitution still exists. Um, Two, because the women in ancient Rome were not regarded to be equals, and so they had kind of like a low self-worth, and they uh, kind of probably just thought of themselves as almost nothing, um, a lot of these women. Some of them wanted to rebel. They wanted to be able to sleep with whoever they wanted and do whatever they want, and also they wanted independence. Um, so that's it on my... Uh, presentation on prostitution. I hope you all enjoyed it and feel free to ask questions below.